Well, the Steve Rats 89. Well, uh, we've got some news on June. They are doing a sequel. Now, yes, we already kind of knew that, but it hadn't been officially announced. Um, the actual, like, Warner Brothers and HBO Max and all that were assuming it was going to happen and suggesting it was going to happen and hinting it was going to happen in interviews and so forth, but it wasn't actually confirmed by Legendary, which is the actual production company, you know, the ones who actually pay for it and actually make it. Um, it's easy for the studios who are sort of um, distributing it and all so forth um, to actually say, yes, we're going to do a sequel. Um, of course we do. <laughs> we're making lots of money on HBO Max, but um, the production company was actually supposed to be making their money out of the theatrical release, so they are not doing as well as they thought they would because the film itself um, it made about $41 million, but it opened sort of kind of had a soft opening in some sort of um, international markets uh, about five weeks before the actual US release. Unfortunately, by then, a lot of the buzz had gone and already been pirated and was all over the place. Um, so it's kind of hurt it. And then being on HBO Max, a lot of people didn't go to see it. So it only made $41 million opening, which is still a good chunk of money, but compared to $80 or $90 million like... Um, um, Shang-Chi, and Black Widow, and Venom, and I think Bond, no, Bond made 56, but either way, every, every other film made more, so it did do smaller than people thought, because when it was first announced, a lot of people were like, yeah, because we've all seen the first film, and we all know the book, it's not really a, a big action, exciting sort of Star Wars, sort of pure, pure, sort of crowd-pleasing sort of movie, you know, it was never going to be that, and um, David Lynch's version was certainly not that. Um, only made about $30 million, and it sort of got its sort of cult status, but it was really never really successful on that level. Um, this one, I mean, we had a couple of TV series and miniseries in the meantime, which sort of um, got into the story as well, but this this was like a, and a lot of people didn't know, is this going to be a TV series or a miniseries, or is it going to be a film? And then it was announced it's going to be a film, it's going to get a public theatrical release, and people started to get excited, and there was a lot of buzz. The previews did really well, and people were really excited for it, more than anyone sort of anticipated. But then COVID got um, put onto HBO Max, um, limited release, and it hasn't done as well. $41 million sounds good, but again, you know, it's really not that good compared to how much it costs, $165 to $185 without the marketing. Um, so Warner's and um, HBO Max were happy because, of course, they're getting, you know, all the streaming and everything. But um, Legendary sort of was losing some of the money from the theatrical release that was sort of hobbled by COVID and limitations and restrictions and, you know, streaming and everything. So apparently they had to do a bit of a deal with them um, to get them back into the game. They probably compensated them, much like they compensated a lot of the actors and so forth who lost money out of the theatrical release of certain films and that. So they announced it. It's definitely happening. It's coming out October 23... Sorry, October 2023. I don't know the actual date in October, but October 2023. And, um, oh my God, because the main criticism of the first film is that it it's, it plays like a two-and-a-half-hour setup for the second film and for the trilogy, and it's a big problem with a lot of these franchise releases where they release a film that's part of a series or part of a trilogy, and it's planned that way, and they think of the big picture, and they want us to see the big picture, but a lot of people just want a good film. And... If the film's sort of restricted by being the first part of a chapter and only sort of being able to cover so much of a story, um, it usually does hurt it. And there's been a few times where we haven't we haven't got the second or third films because the first film didn't do well because it didn't stand alone. So I was sort of a bit worried about that with it. Um, but yeah, so Legendary has announced it. Um, it's going to be released uh, as theatrical exclusively, um, and it should do a lot better than this one because this one will do okay and they can blame it on HBO Max and COVID and everything. And a lot of films are going to get a free pass in this period, and I don't think the box office is going to affect necessarily sequels and so forth because, you know, we know there was, you know, mitigating circumstances and factors and so forth. So I'm glad it's getting a sequel um, because story-wise sounds like it really needs it. Um, I just hope that it works because I kind of hate this idea of having to watch all three films to be able to enjoy them because on their own they don't sort of work and this is a bit of a problem with a lot of franchises. But um, Dune was never... I mean, I think a lot of people aren't familiar with Dune, the original film, and the, um, the novel and everything, so they're sort of expecting something more. Um, so some people were a bit disappointed. But, um, yep, yeah, I just I just heard and I was like, okay. Because I, I thought it was strange that they were talking about a sequel, but the edit wasn't really announced and I didn't really understand, but sort of been rumoured slash explained that it was all about the money and 
now that um, Legendary has been compensated for losing money in the theatrical, um, they're willing to play ball and do a second film if they get an exclusively theatrical release. So that all makes sense. So yay. Hopefully it um, goes well. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, are you looking forward to this June? Are you looking forward to the next June? Um, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. I'm happy to watch it, but it's not the sort of thing I'd return to, you know, to enjoy it again and again and again. It's more something you watch just to see and experience and know, and then you move on to the next thing. So it's sort of, you know, I think it's limited. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go.